Boaters, boaters, this is Paulie from All Docked Up. How you doing? And we can never have a podcast without my main man. Captain Buzz here. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, Buzz, we've we, we got to talk about the menu like we always do. Well, first hey. of all, let me tell you, yeah, <laughs> we start my day. I'm sunburned to a crisp. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Yeah, well, that was a complete momo move. But, dude, it's Memorial Day weekend. Customers are breathing down my neck. Paulie, is my boat done? Is my boat done? Is my boat done? Well. So sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I get it. Well, we, let's hold. I'll just hold up. Oh, me. don't get me all excited already. You know what? Let's not hold it. Because no. I got here tonight. He took his sandals off, and it looked like he still had sandals on his feet. <laughs> because the tan, no, not the tan line, the burn line on his, on his feet. Oh, dude, I'm telling you what. what? Don't, guys, don't ever forget to make sure that if you're wearing sandals all day long, I promise you this, put some sunscreen on the top of your feet. I'm going to be a hurting boy later on tonight. Put sunscreen on all the time. Well, we'll get to that point, too. So we got to talk about menu. Yeah. Uh, dude, I hooked you up again. I, well, because last week we had the, the smoke. I, I was I cooked, right? The smoked pork and the, uh, um, the the risotto and the spinach, right? It was a good meal. And, it was but, delish. Th and this 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 week, it was a penne with Ita sweet Italian sausage, beautiful red bell peppers, and a nice... Cento San Marzano sauce with fresh basil, lots of fresh basil. Very aromatic. It catches you right when the plate hits oh, in front of your you face. Put the basil in there, and you had a you had a couple of leaves. Basil. On the top. I Some love fresh basil. I love basil. cheese. Sweet Italian basil. It, it's beautiful. It, it is. It's such a nice add addition we, to the always, dish. We've always we've always got a uh, little pot of it growing all the time, snipping it off for meals. Good stuff, dude. I'll tell you what. I might throw a, a small pot of basil on the boat, <laughs> stick it in a cup holder, and just let the thing grow all week long. <laughs> Oh, we, I we love never basil. we never eat it all, but we absolutely love basil. All right, so let me get into the captain's brief. You're gonna you're gonna we got captain's brief, and then we got details. Chop right? chop, Margaret. What do you got? I, I'm on it. I'm on, it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, on fire tonight. Sorry. <laughs> when are you not? Well, you know, listen. With the amount of work that I had to get done today, I washed five full size boats today single handedly, and the smallest being a thirty, and the and the biggest being a fifty foot cruiser motor yacht. You need some coffee. That's you got to do it. Uh, but I'll That's tell you what, but I delivered. You're, you're getting everybody ready for the big weekend. No doubt about it. Uh, so my briefing <clears throat> this evening is, is, is choosing the right personal flotation device or PFD. And it, and it has to do with, you know, you want to make sure that, because all of them have these great labels on them. And I'm, we're not going to go into depth. We could fill a whole podcast on, on the different classes. And well, let's, so let, let's say this. But, a lot of boaters mm -hmm. that are buying a brand new boat, the marinas themselves, the dealers that themselves right. put together the standard PFD that's wrapped in plastic. You yep. know what I mean? They yep. got that. But there's plenty of other PFDs that you should really recognize. And there, there are. And 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 when it gets specific for your weight uh, and what you're doing, so like for you know, children need need their own type of PFD, so it's not too big or too small. Pets, for example, PFDs, great idea. I've seen some really great. Uh, PFDs for pets. Yeah, it's got a handle that sits right on top of their back. If you have to it grab them out of the water, the whole it body supports them. them up. If they're swimming next to the boat, great stuff. Don't forget about having a good PFD for your dog. And and when I'm when I'm uh, uh, working as a captain, I use my inflatable offshore. Absolutely, we what? ran with those all the way back from Portland, Maine, when we picked up the trawler. Yeah, what a great what a great unit because it, it, number one, it's very comfortable. Right. So you don't feel you don't feel that bulkiness. And so you're more apt to wear it because it is that comfortable, even if even on a, uh, on a hotter day. And but one thing about when you buy those and, and if, you, if you're interested in that, what you have to do, which is I didn't know this until I bought it. You have to inflate it manually because there's a little hose and you, you blow it up and it, and it pops up out of its casing. And you have to let it sit there. For I think 24 hours, at least overnight. So, so that, well, you want to make sure that it held air. It holds air. And right. then go ahead and repack it. That's right. Back in its original state. And then you go ahead and hook up the CO2. That's right. It's very specific on the way you fold it. And it's quite complicated if you haven't done it before. Dude, but you did mine because <laughs> I couldn't do it. I'm like, Buzzy, what is this, origami? Like, what's going on here? 
I was not a happy guy. I'm like, I'm trying to fold this. He's like, Paul, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, Cap, if you don't take this thing from me right now, I'm going to smack you upside the head with it. Because you're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. <laughs> you hated me that day. <laughs> I, 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 had, I had a lot I, of coffee that day, too. I had your back. So, uh, But it's important that you have to, you know, don't just put it on and put the cartridge in and think you're good. Go ahead and uh, inflate it manually and then repack it after, after an overnight. Make sure it holds air. Uh, it, it's a, it's again, they're very, very comfortable. So that's my captain's brief. Make sure you choose the right PDF uh, or PFD because it, it's different if you're if you're fishing or if you're on a kayak or if you're on a wave runner or if you're you're uh, wakeboarding or if you're water skiing, onshore, offshore, just tons. Just bottom do line, do take the time to figure out exactly. which PFD is most comfortable suited for you based off of your height and weight and follow the directions and make sure that you're safe. Pretty Bottom safe. line. Pretty safe. All right, so what do we got for the detailer's brief? Uh, let me tell you a little something, something about Captain or my detailer's briefing. So, guys, today, my my detailer's briefing is keep the, the son of a bitchin' cords, your power cords, out of the water. <laughs> and, and let me tell you something. I was washing a customer's boat today, and... You know, I'm getting everything all tidied up, and I noticed that the cord is draped over the port side, and it's starting to rub, and the cord's dirty. So I'm uh -oh. like, yeah, let me do a solid. Let me give this, let me, let me take care of this guy, and I'm going to make sure that this cord's nice and clean. Because mm. the boat looks beautiful, but you can see where it's chafing the fiberglass. Oh, from the cord. From the cord, because the cord's <sighs> nasty and dirty. Right. So what does what does Paulie do? I go to grab a magic eraser, grab the cord just to clean it off real nice. Give it a rundown with your hand. Give it a rundown. You know, do a solid for the customer. And I cut the bejesus out of my hand. The man had barnacles oh, on no. his cord. What barnacles? That Guys, hurts. bottom line, secure your cords. Keep them out of the water. Yeah. Because now I guarantee you this bad boy is getting infected. Washed my hands. I dumped. Uh, keep, out. keep ahead of that. Yeah, yeah because right. you can get an easy infection in a heartbeat from an old barnacle, especially something sitting dirty in the water. Yeah, it's a good call. The thing about marinas, never, ever swim around a, at a marina. No, because there's the possibility of being electrocuted, you know, at the marina. And I'll tell you what, you know, if you're putting out a positive charge into the water, if you have a break in that cord, somebody can get electrocuted. That's number one. Yeah. But number two, especially... Look out for you and look out for your neighbor. My man over, <laughs> I'll never forget it. He said, he's like, Paulie, you can quote me today. The name of his boat is Nuts in a Knot. <laughs> That's a serious name. And he said, look out for you and look out for your fellow neighbor. Keep your cords out of the water. I like it. So we got to throw a shout out to my man. <laughs> Nuts in a knot. Dude, when, he, when I saw the name on the back of his boat, I was pissing myself. That's oh, crazy. my God, that was funny. <laughs> it was good. It was good. All right, so we've got a couple topics today. and, and Memorial you're... Day weekend, Buzzy. Oh, I know. Memorial it's, Day it's, weekend's it's, approaching. People are hype. It's a big deal. But but the first thing I want to get to is, so you know we had uh, we had Captain Brandon from um, Towboat US, uh, a podcaster or two ago, and I and I told him I said, boy, I'd really like to do a ride with. Well, I got the opportunity. Yeah, I heard you got the opportunity, and yeah. And, and yeah, what is my name, Skip? Well, your name was <laughs> not around, so you did you know hey, if you had been there. you know throw a brother a bone once in a while, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, Captain Jeff, who who uh, works for for Brandon. Um, He's one of the Tobo captains for Tobo U.S. Chesapeake City. Yes, yes. And and he actually captained my boat when we brought it down from Rhode Island to the Chesapeake Bay. So yeah, that was another trip I got skipped on, you son of a bitch. Hey, again, uh, <laughs> you know, your name was not around. So, you know. <laughs> so Jeff said, hey, I'm, I'm going to go out. You want to go? I said, absolutely. So I grabbed my 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 uh, PFD and a, and, a, and a quick knapsack with sunscreen in it and water. <laughs> I'm looking at. Power. I forgot that you're looking, looking at, at your me. Feet. You're looking at me because you could tell that I wore sandals. On. <laughs> wow. And so we went out, and what we had to do is uh, uh, rescue a guy. What did he do? He cracked the lower unit on a on a uh, on an outboard. I mean, the whole thing was stripped. It was shot. He wasn't going anywhere. What? So he smacked an underwater submerged object? No, it failed from from corrosion and and just was old. He didn't hit anything. It just. 
just torqued and, and broke. No way. Yeah, yeah. I'd never seen that. Before. That's what I call a serious rotted lower unit. It was, it was <laughs> shot. It was shot. And so uh, we went out, and uh, it was a, just a couple mile run. It wasn't wasn't terribly far from from where the the you know Captain Jeff had the boat. Did he bring the uh, uh, Did he bring the boater back to his uh, port port of call? Yeah, we back well, to his we, marina. Well, the the challenge was, and uh, and I, I will say that Jeff said he's I was the best first mate he ever had. Now that may be because he doesn't have anybody else. because he never <laughs> has the first mate. So yeah, I'm sure any. <laughs> but I'm but confident, I'm Captain Buzz. Come I, on now, you know I'm not a you know I'm not a not a landlubber. I can I can uh, I could I I gave him I gave him I I helped him out. But anyway, so the guy was in about. He said he was in four feet of water. He he was he was standing. He was in like two feet of water, and so the boat we took um, was a you know. Which uh, one did you run? Did you run the single the single diesel with the center console, or did you run the twin diesel uh, Zodiac? No, we took well that the one you're talking about. That is a twin diesel. He's got two Yanmars in there, uh, but it. But He's it, got two Yanmars in the Zodiac, but the, the single center console is that a single or a double? That's a double. No, oh, I yeah. thought that was a single diesel. Oh yeah, no, he's got he's got two screws in that, but they're straight shafts, and we're, we're we, we couldn't we couldn't lift up outboards, and we couldn't move the jet around, right? So we ran out of water, so we couldn't get to the guy. But the but the customer, he was he was solid. He he jumped into the water because Jeff, you know, Jeff said, "Hey, I can't, I can't get to you." We, you know, so we had to throw him a line. We had to back off. Well, what what we asked him to do was he jumped in the water and he and he walked his own boat out. To, so, because we, with a boat like that, you know, it's rudders and, and straight shafts. There was no steering when we got stuck in the mud. So, right, to, to, you can't, we had to back off. Right. Um, but if you were in the Zodiac with no with the, lower units and you were just running off the jet drives, you can put that thing in a foot of water without we, a problem. We, we could have gotten there. You're going to stir some mud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so, we handed him the, the tow line and he hooked it to his, his eye in the bow. And he hopped on board, and then we towed him back. And then we got back into Engineer's Cove, uh, and then we put him on the hip. I was going to say, so you did a single tow. Yeah. You wrapped the right. So you got a single line that's going off the stern of the tow boat, Correct. going to the eye, you know, the eye hook on the front of the bow. That's right. But then once you actually got him where you were going to pull him either into his marina slip, you did a hip tow. We we put him on the hip, and and uh, Captain Jeff, um, you know, tr- dropped him off out the dock. Guy got his truck and trailer, and Jeff. On the hip, put his boat right up on the trail. I'll tell you why. It was sweet. Those Tobo US dri- the they're captains, they real really know how to maneuver a boat when they're doing a hip tow. Yeah, it was uh, very impressive. A great experience. Uh, I told him, hey, look, I- I'll go out anytime because I enjoyed Did you myself. take a video or pictures or anything? I do have a couple photos. You better because if not, I was going to call you a full fledged Momo. <laughs> 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 At least you don't call me a Fugazi. Well, I mean, if you didn't take any photos or videos, that is a full fledged Fugazi no, Mo. I, I documented it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can share on a blog or something, but uh, and I'll do more because I really enjoyed it. It was it was cool. It was, it was, it was I'm good. sure it was. You're out there towing. You got you know you got the lights on. You got your emergency LEDs on on top. Well, and it was funny. It was the night before, and this is how I got this ride because the night before, when I got down to the boat, I saw Jeff getting ready to go out. And I said, "Hey, where are you going?" He said, "Oh, I've got to go all the way down to Pools Island and haul this guy back." And I said, "Oh, wow, it sounds great. You know, have a great time." As soon as he pulled away, I went, "Why didn't I jump on with him?" I didn't care. I had nothing. It to was do. a nighttime run. I would have. I would have been. You know, it would have been an eight-hour run. But you I, completely I, shit the bed. I screwed that up. And I told him. I sent him a text. I said I should have jumped on with you. And he goes, "You're welcome anytime." I and so the next time he saw me, I jumped on. So it was. It was a great experience. And I'll and I'll definitely do that again. So one of the other topics we want to talk about is uh, the new lanyard law. And, and so, I, you know, I'm sure some folks have heard about it, but Coast Guard's, it's Coast Guard's real tough this year. DNR and Coast Guard are going to be checking everybody for their lanyards. Yeah, it's something that, that, that you're right. They're going to be checking. Uh, but, but, you know, this, this went into effect on April 21st of 2021. And it's for boats that are under 26 feet, right? You must use either a helm or an outboard, um, or wireless, which I didn't know existed. Which is neither cool. did I. So uh, they have wireless lanyards. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really cool. If you can try that. Um, so when they're traveling up up on plane, 
uh, or they're above displacement speeds. They got to make sure that that lanyard's ready to rock and roll. When traveling on plane or above displacement speeds, that's exactly right. If it's, if it's below 26 feet. Now, the other thing is that um, boats manufactured uh, after January 2020 or later must have a functioning lanyard style, right? Installed at the helm or an outboard, right? Um, or a wireless if they have one. And you must wear it, right? You have to have it clipped to your body. Right. That's so if the you idea get, of that. Right. The whole point of it is if it's not clipped to your body, if an United States Coast Guard boat That's right. decides to, you know, flashes lights on board your vessel, and even though you have it and you're not connected to it, you're getting a ticket. Well, the thing is, don't forget, they've got really powerful binoculars and and so yeah, they got they government can, binoculars that get, money we can't they can get close to you and you think, oh, I better clip it on. It's like they're getting pulled over by a state trooper trying to put your seatbelt on. It's already too late. It's already he too knows. late. And so do they. So, do, you know, don't try to, to pull one of those. Um, and then and then other boats uh, manufactured before 2020 must use one um, if it's provided and installed and functioning. So there's a couple different things you got to be, you know, if you, you got to be careful about um understanding the law and there's a couple of exemptions um so if you if you have a boat under 26 feet but your helm is in completely enclosed with a door mm -hmm. you don't need it at that at that point because okay you're not falling out of the boat right? you're not going to fall overboard <laughs> right um if you're engaged in low speed activities docking and fishing you don't have to have it on and boats that produce less than uh, 150 pounds of static thrust it's about two horsepower so, so if you're actually out there on a dinghy and you got two horsepower or less, obviously you don't need one. Well, and my, I have a, I have a dinghy. It's eight foot long and I have a Torquedo electric motor and it's two and a half horsepower. So guess what? I need to, I need to clip that thing. And the, the way the Torquedo work works, it, it, it's a, it's a magnet that sits on the tiller and it's, you attach that to you. And of course, if you move and the magnet comes off, it loses power. Okay. So, I never see. Okay. Yeah. So it works very well. And I, I you know, you know, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, let's it. be real frank and honest. There's plenty of boaters out there. You know what I mean? That are not using their lanyards because I don't know. You're just not used to it, but I'll tell you what safety is going to become a very big thing. Um, especially for this upcoming season, because there are so many more boaters hitting the water. We have a lot of novice boaters. Yeah. We have a lot of first timers. They drop some scratch. They bought themselves a gorgeous center console. Good for them. We food. love it. And we love it because all docked up <laughs> is here to, to help service all of your needs. But at the end of the day, we got to keep safety in mind. And, and listen, I, we all get it. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass. But the bottom line here is this. Is if we're not safe out in the water, somebody's going to get hurt. Then you're, then you're not going to enjoy your boating experience. And then you're not going to enjoy that boating experience. So take it very seriously, guys. Because and make no mistake, they're out there looking this year. Well, you're right. And, and if if you bought a boat and it happens to be under 26 feet and it comes with this, it's it, you're you're the captain of that vessel. You're responsible for your souls on board. And it's the law. Bottom line, that's you know they made it a law. It's not just that oh, I'll put it on when I feel like it. You got it's a law. You got to have it on. Yeah. It's maritime law. It's in the books. Boom, closed. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. It's and I'm all and I'm all about. We've all, we listen, we've all done dumb shit where it comes down to it that we were not following, you know, the right amount of safety that we you should You and have. I are no, no, we're not exempt from doing that. No, we, because that's we've why all we're learned. sharing these stories. Right. And that's why we're telling everybody under the sun. All right. So this is, we are, this podcast is being recorded right before Memorial Day. Yeah. Memorial Day 2021, baby. Hell yeah. And I'm getting ready to shove off. Yeah. By the way, where <laughs> is the fun call for that one? Guys, Wait. this is son of my bitch. He's going on a seven day. Is that Paulie's not around again? Uh, oh, no, Paulie is around because my boat's right next to yours, you my natural bumby. <laughs> you're killing me, Smalls. So this man's, you're going, well, sorry. Tell me where's your first port of call when you shove off on Saturday morning. Where are you going? So we're, we're running from Chesapeake City down to Solomon's Island. How long did it take you to do it? Well... It's not how long, because we, we, my wife and I, this is one of our favorite things, shoving off, and I'm, I'm first light. Yeah, I you're really, first light. I yeah. like to get up. Right, yeah, that's when I want to crack you upside the head with a boat pole. Yeah, <laughs> he's knocking on my yeah. boat. Well, my wife isn't happy about it either, but, but when we get underway, <laughs> then she understands, because what we will do is run, uh, we'll run, you know, uh, 
uh, eight miles an hour uh, for until we have our coffee. Yeah, you're breakfast. having your cafe. It's, it's it nice little ease beautiful. Into the vacation. And then, we'll, you know, we get down to Turkey Point, we'll put it on plane. And so normally a, a five hour run, uh, it's 93 statute miles. Um, and you're running roughly 22 knots. 22 knots is about for us about 24 miles an hour. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's going to take us a few hours, but we don't care. It's it's the journey. If I was aboard your vessel, I wouldn't care yeah. either. I love riding on there. She's nice and comfy. Yeah, we'll have coffee. and The diesels breakfast. are just... Rrr, 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 rrr. They're happy. Nothing They're better really than happy. having a pair of twin screws and diesels on board, baby. So, a couple days in, in uh, at Spring Cove Marina. Great place. Uh, awesome pool. Nice facility. Really nice. And then we're heading to Harrington Harbor North in Deal, Maryland. Deal, Maryland. Uh, another great place. And and I recommend, if you go there, to have a dinghy. Because... You made mention about that the yeah, last time that you were there. Well, that creek, and I, I don't know the name of it, and I should have been more prepared for that, but the there's, there's all these great places to go out of the way up this creek. And you can just park your dinghy and, and, uh, and go up and play a game or hang out and have a, have a beer to have food, have break. We went out for breakfast on the dinghy. So there's a lot of great things to go and see with a dinghy, uh, at, uh, out of Harrington Harbor North. So if you're going, make sure you're prepared. Yeah. I wish I, I don't have the room on typical sport cruiser. If you don't have the room off the back of your swim platform, you're yeah. throwing it up over the front of the bow and no, I can't do it. Can't do it. I can't do it. It, it kills my line of sight. Yeah. I, I don't feel comfortable doing it, but I see people doing it all the time. Because they need a dink. Yeah. They're out on anchor and, you know, they're out on the hook and they're enjoying their weekend. They want to go to the, you know, to the restaurant. They want to go have a drink. But... <laughs> well, well, you helped me, you know, stow mine the other day. Um, That's cause... great that you can put yours in your engine room. Yeah. You know, aft behind your two girls. You yeah. Now it's, that. it's deflated and wrapped up in its, in its, in its bag. Cause it's a, uh, um, you know, it's a, a slatted floor so I can roll it up into a pretty tight package. Yeah, that's always fun when I'm out there on the <laughs> hook with you and we got to pull that thing up. And by the way, guys, Buzzy, Captain Buzz is the most OCD, the son of a bitch that it gets there. <laughs> He's like, Paula, give me a hand. So we got to pull the dink out of the water. Then after we position the dink, then we have to scrub the entire bottom. Well, you can't put because it away. Because God nasty. forbid, you know. Which, listen, I love you for it. You know, at this stage of the game, you know, it was a rough evening. I'm like, somebody, I need another cup of coffee. Chop, chop. <laughs> we scrub the entire thing, let it dry, deflate it, and then she's got to get wrapped up in her bag. Oh, and so put beautiful. away. And... Now, but I, I, you know, if we break it out at Spring Cove, I will deflate it and leave it in the cockpit rolled up. I won't put it down below. Because as soon as I get to next port of call i'm gonna fire it back up yeah once you get to harrington harbor you're gonna need it again correct and then from harrington harbor we're going over to st michael's st michael's marina um are you gonna go rock lemoncello are you going to lemoncello for dinner yeah hey and ava's for pizza and perry cabin for dinner oh, dude yeah. i'll never forget it you were golfing and i had jennifer on board i had your wife on board and we went to the inn at perry cabin at grand Marnier 110 and she picked up the bill. I'm like, Buzzy's not going to like to see that credit card. I mean, it's the first I'm hearing of this story. <laughs> well, a lot of the times it's when no you say your no, name is, he's not around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah. You know what? That's it. Give me give me a blunt object. I, dude, I got a slipper right there. I'll do what my father used to do to me. But I'll tell you what. That was great. Graham Ornier and Jennifer's like, oh, let's do it. I'm like, oh, Buzzy's going to love me for that. Well, normally when you say no, I just go to your wife and she says yes. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta admit, I do it to you all the time. You do, you do. <laughs> and she and she loves you. So yeah, that that you get away with that all the time. I mean, you do that all the time. <laughs> uh, I get away with bloody murder. I'm freaking Polly. What are you gonna do? Well, Paolo for sure. I'll tell you what. This yeah, past yeah. weekend, we went to the Inner Harbor. Oh, oh my Baltimore. goodness! What a great trip. Yeah, I'll tell, we got to share this. So guys, uh, shakedown cruise, right? Put oh, my yeah, boat, right. put my boat in the water on Friday. She's completely detailed, bottom paint, out drive. Hold it after two winters on the hard. Right, because last year I never put my boat in the water. By Correct. the time the, you know, by the time the the, the boating ban was done, and lifted, and the pandemic, yeah. when the boats were going in the water, 
All my customers' boats had to be done. I had four months worth of work to do in 30 days. And I'm like, guys, there's not enough espresso in the world to pull this off. <laughs> like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So by the time I got everybody situated and done, the season was almost over. I'm like, why am I going to put my boat in the water? Wow. I got everyone else's done. Long story short, we went to the Inner Harbor. Oh. We stayed at Harbor East. I, I don't I, go to the Inner Harbor. And by the way, we'll never break that rule again. We have a rule that when we go to the Inner Harbor of Baltimore, we always stay at Harbor East and um, enjoy the Atlas Restaurant Group's oh, yeah. restaurants. And I'm going to do a complete shout out to my man, Brian, the oh, GM yeah. for the Atlas Restaurant Groups. This man is a machine. I'm sitting at the bar at, at Maximum, their new, their new Mexican restaurant in the Inner Harbor, and somebody's tapping on my shoulder. And I'm like, Brian, my man, I'm like, how did you know I was here? He's like, because yeah. I know who's here. Man, he was great. And then I told you, and you were like, get the hell out of here. You were all pissed off. We had the most incredible experience. We had dinner Saturday night at Uzo Bay. Oh, yeah. We started off at cocktails. And they got the octopus straight this time. They got they got the octopus was delicious. All right. And okay. I'm telling you what, I want to do a big thing for the Atlas Restaurant Group, along with their marina at Harbor East. Oh, yeah. Because the way that they service the boaters... And just the general public. The food was outstanding. I had longostinos. Oh, my God. Beautiful mm. longostines. Jeffrey had rack of lamb. Michelle had Maine lobster, Whoa. surf and turf. We ate really, really good. Yeah. But they saw that I was there. They know that I come there. You know, I, I'm a, a repeat customer. And, you're, 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 and they you're, spoiled you're, me beautiful. You're Paolo, my, my man, pots and pans. I'll tell you what, and it drives you crazy. And the lady, wow. the, the one girl who was working as a decade, she's like, Paulie. Is that you? And I'm like, holy shit, she remembered yeah, I, me. Also, <laughs> all right, I, b before we, okay, I'm going to tell this story before we close for tonight. Right. So, yeah, he's like, you hear him laughing? So I'm running my 420. You're running your your uh, your 285. And we're, we're going to the Inner Harbor. This is a couple of years ago. <clears throat> so so we radio. And we're pulling into the slip. And uh and the deckhands come out and they grab a line and they help me and how you doing and nice to see you and whatever. And then you pull in like a slip over and they just drop Damn. all my lines, <laughs> leave me hanging there with my electrical cord in it. I could, be, okay, where you go? Like the five of them go over and help Polly pull up. But what are you going to do? I mean, I make a great impression. Everybody remembers Polly. And then, and then you go back three years later and they're like, hey, Polly. Right. Dude, I'll tell you what. Once again, guys, I'm it, invisible when I'm around Paul. Yeah, he it drives Buzzy crazy. But what are you gonna do? I, you know, I leave a lasting impression. No one can ever say they forgot Paulie. But all boaters, I'm telling you, except when you, I forgot you when we were cruising. I forgot you. Oh, I, <laughs> no, let me hit you so dead. <laughs> header gut. Header header gut. <laughs> but um, yeah, just right. an incredible, incredible weekend. We enjoyed ourselves. The weather was great. Everything was beautiful. So. Um, I can't wait to do, I would love to do a podcast with the crew. Well, so our next podcast, we won't be together. I'll be on my cruise. We're going live, baby. We're going to be on the back of each other's boats if we can figure out the technology and do our next podcast. Which I'm PW. Our... I will make sure it gets done. My man, pots and pans. Yeah, so you're going to be sitting on the back of your boat in your cockpit. In, you know, uh, wherever we happen to be. Wherever you happen to be. Yeah. And I'm going to be recording live from Chesapeake City. I love it. It's going to be beautiful. All right. Well, we've we've managed to uh, waste another 30 minutes of your time. Waste? Are you out of your <laughs> mind? We just crushed it. I hope. Yeah. I, we, I hope some folks learn some things. And uh, as we always try to do, in all seriousness. But Make sure uh, everybody has a safe. Yes, please. A very happy and safe Memorial as Day weekend. Every time you take your boat up. Absolutely. Captain Buzz signing off. Uh, standing by on 6-8. Dude, E.W. Pauly, standing by on 6-8. Guys, have a great weekend.